CataractCoach.com, what do we have here? Let's talk about FACO settings. What are typical settings that we use during surgery? So let me show you some of mine. Now this is a normal setup here. I'm at the county hospital with our, our residents where we teach surgery. And these are some of the settings that we're using. So you'll notice along the bottom here, let's look at this first. These are the various modes that we have here. And let's go through them one by one. First, we've got pre-FACO, which is typically used to remove anterior cortical material. Next comes sculpt. Sculpt would be to make a groove like in divide and conquer or stop and chop. Chop, which would be to remove our quadrants or hold the nucleus for chopping. You could also have a quadrant removal mode, but they're very similar. Epi would be epinuclear, to remove that epinuclear shell. Cortex, to remove the cortex during irrigation aspiration. Polish to clean up the lens capsule, viscoelastic removal. Then we also have backup of having coagulation if needed, as well as anterior vitrectomy. In my normal settings in my OR, I don't use all these settings. I use three settings. I use chop at the beginning of the case. I double tap my pedal. Let me just show you. There's the pedal. By stepping on this side, I'm able to change the mode. So I just double tap it, tap, tap, and that taps it once, twice, and goes to cortex. And then I remove the cortex, and then at the end, to remove the viscoelastic, I double tap it again, and it goes to viscoelastic removal. So that's my normal, three things. Chop, Chop. cortex, viscoelastic removal. With the residents, though, we have many more settings across here, and we're gonna talk about how to choose parameters for each of those. Let's look at what else we have on the screen here. So we have here surgeon name in the corner, there we go, and we can choose from a, man, a number of other doctors. We have different procedures, so you can choose settings based on different types of cataracts if you want or different techniques of surgery. In the corner here, that's the amount of energy placed in the eye, and you can see at the end of the case, this will keep track for you, telling you how much ultrasound power was put in the eye, how much fluid went through the eye, the timing of the case. These are important to know. This is telling me our mode. And then let's look at the settings here. So let's go back to a pre-FACO setting. This pre-FACO setting is just to remove some of the lens material off the anterior surface. So we have some pressure to keep the eye inflated. This could probably be a little lower. A little bit of a vacuum. Notice it's linear going across and same with the flow rate and very little power needed. A couple other parameters here. PEL, what is PEL? That's patient eye level. And if you look on the machine on the side here, this light should be lined up with the patient's eye. If it's not, you simply adjust here. So tap patient eye level, and we can, as we push that button, you'll notice that the, the dot moves up, the LED light. So line that up with the patient's eye level. Why is that important, patient eye level? Because remember, this is how we're calibrating what the pressure in the eye is. If you have a FACO machine with the hanging bottle of BSS, then the height difference between the, the bottle and the patient's eye, that height difference is going to be the infusion pressure. In this machine, we actually have a spot to put in a plastic bag, and these pressure plates compress the plastic bag full of BSS to help give us a forced infusion. So we're going to go through all these settings in the upcoming weeks as we talk about FACO settings and what to choose. But today, just a quick overview of the settings that are typically programmed in our machine. And again, for me, that means chop, then cortex, then viscoelastic removal, and that's about it for the case. So let's end with one last thing, which is what these lines are across the numbers. That may not be intuitively obvious until I point it out. For flow rate, the machine will start off at zero flow, but I could change that and I could have it start off a little bit more. So at the very minimum, it'll be six. And then as I step on the pedal, it'll ramp up to 34. And then slowly we can change that slope as it approaches 40. Similarly, we can change the power that goes in the eye. We can have it be a linear control or I can have it, tap that button, now it's absolutely the same power across no matter what. And I think there's an advantage to having linear control. So I look forward to teaching you more about fluidics and ultrasound and phacoparameters, and we will go through everything in the weeks to come. Thanks for watching.